and now farewell. I loved you as a son, and as a student, and as a friend. Until we meet again, may the Force be with you. Obi-Wan Kenobi's final words as he appears one last time before Luke Skywalker. So I've talked a lot about being a Star Wars fan on this channel. I've made some videos about Disney Star Wars. I've made some videos about Lucas Star Wars. But one era of Star Wars I haven't talked about is ironically my favorite era. An era of Star Wars that answered the questions of what happened after the George Lucas saga of Star Wars, but also what happened before. So my friends, let's talk about that. Let's talk about Star Wars Legends. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface, drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. Legends was the continuity of Star Wars set before the Disney buyout discontinued the old expanded universe, and also before a good deal of it was retconned by our favorite space cowboy. No, not that one. No, no, no. That one's not even from Star Wars. Okay, you know what? Moving on. I'm not going to get into the levels of what was canon about Legends and what wasn't canon about Legends because it doesn't matter. They were all officially licensed Star Wars stories that got approved by George Lucas. Basically, all you need to know about the authenticity of Star Wars Legends is that they were all official Star Wars stories that were connected to those six small indie films that George Lucas made a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Let me break down Star Wars Legends in three easy parts. Number one, the story set after Return of the Jedi, the most notable being the Thrawn trilogy that introduced fan favorite characters like Mara Jade and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Then there's Star Wars Legacy, which introduced characters like anti-hero Kate Skywalker and Darth Talon, who is just... Um, uh, moving on. <laughs> Uh, number two, the stories that were set before The Phantom Menace, the most notable being the Old Republic era with characters like Exar Kun and Ule Kaldroma, or even further down the line of fan favorite characters like Revan, Kreia, or Darth Bane. Finally, number three, have been stories set within the timeline of the six film saga itself, stories that fleshed out events and characters that existed between the time skip of each film. That's where we introduced to characters like Starkiller or this girlfriend of Luke Skywalker or that girlfriend of Luke Skywalker, how did Han meet Chewie and all that fun stuff. There's really no way to cover every single Legends character and story in one video without completely losing my mind and going down a rabbit hole I may never return from. And I'm gonna level with you guys. This video was supposed to be out a very long time ago, so to please the algorithm gods and to have my manager not kill me, we're gonna cover as much ground as we can and pray for the best. So like and comment and please tell my manager in the comment section, do not kill Okairo. Okay, 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 moving on. So. Let us begin with the story that continued the adventures of Luke, Han, Leia, and Lando after Return of the Jedi. The Thrawn Trilogy, or as my mom liked to call it when she was reading it to me as a bedtime story growing up, Why You Shouldn't Piss Off Redheads and Dudes in Blue Body Paint, was a trilogy of books written by Star Wars alumni author Timothy Zahn, heir to the Empire. Dark Force Rising and The Last Command can be seen as some of the greatest Star Wars stories ever told, and still to this day, many see it as a worthy follow-up to the original trilogy. It's not really hyperbolic to say these are the most highly praised books in Star Wars Legends. The key major players in this trilogy were Mara Jade, 
Come on over, Mara. Grand Admiral Thrawn. I'm afraid I just blew myself. And Joris Old Man Strength, who each brought something different to the insane balls to the wall dinner table that was Star Wars Legends. Seriously, the impact this trilogy and these characters had cannot be overstated, even if most Star Wars fans only remember the big blue papa over here. These three characters challenge our heroes in ways they were never challenged before in the original trilogy. Joris isn't a Sith, Thrawn isn't even a force user, and while Mera is an antagonist, she is not a villain. The Thrawn trilogy asks the question, what happened to our heroes from the original trilogy? in ways it was rather impossible to do, back then after Return of the Jedi, and even at the time of the sequel trilogy being made. The story takes place only a handful of years after Return of the Jedi, and we watch our heroes dealing with the strange middle ground of being through with the story of the Empire versus the Rebels, but not at the height of the New Jedi Order or the New Republic, as our heroes are trying to rebuild what the Empire had destroyed while also dealing with the remnants of the Empire itself. And in a perfect world, I could have honestly seen the Thrawn trilogy as a perfect sequel trilogy George could have started right after the OT, if he wasn't burnt down and wanting to actually, you know, live his life. I mean seriously, the nerve of George Lucas. There are plenty of other great stories to find after the Thrawn trilogy, but instead I want to focus on another great era of Star Wars set after the OT, about some really great characters that a lot of people love, like Jenna Solo, dubbed the Sword of the Jedi, and her two brothers, Anakin Solo and Jason Solo. These stories can be anything from adventurous and lighthearted to tragic ones that will test your endurance for how much you can see the Solos suffer. But hey, you survived the sequels, so watching Han and his youngest son Anakin Solo slowly drift apart because Chewie sacrificed his life to save him, thus getting crushed by a literal fucking moon, shouldn't be that hard for you. I mean, it's not like Anakin Solo died very young and wasn't able to reconcile with his father completely. <laughs> oh, Star Wars legends, you depressing motherfucker. I will say I wish we had gotten more from Ben Skywalker, Luke Skywalker's son. In many ways, he's what folks misinterpret Luke to be in the original trilogy, in the sense that he's really just along for the ride in comparison to his more compelling cousins, Anakin, Jason, and Jaina, while also being overshadowed by his parents Luke and Mara. There are even times where fan favorite characters like Kyle Katan or Finn Galfridian could be seen as more memorable and impactful to that era of Star Wars than Ben Skywalker. I will say, however, all that aside, The Next Generation is definitely an era worth checking out, especially if you're someone who just wants to see what the kids of the OT3 would be like and what trouble they began into. Next, we have Star Wars Legacy, and what makes this era of Star Wars so interesting is how this is the first era of Star Wars set after Return of the Jedi with none of the original trilogy characters. Mostly because they're all dead, we're in the Descendant territory. The only OT character who shows up is Ghost Luke who tells his descendant to stop being a drug addict and being emo. Piss off, Ghost! And R2 because, well, it's R2. <laughs> One side of Star Wars Legacy follows Cade Skywalker, who's what happens if you fuse Luke Skywalker with Mountain Dew and early 2000s Edge. There's a lot of dark stories, high octane action, and Darth Talon, who awakened a lot of things and a lot of fans. Freeze! I'm thirsty. Yet, even though these stories of Star Wars look like they're blaring My Immortal and every Linkin Park song ever created on repeat, there's a good deal of heart and sincerity in these stories. Kate Skywalker is the answer to what a Skywalker and a former Jedi would look like after the galaxy kept using them as an intergalactic punching bag for their entire life. While Luke and Anakin's story saw them start as a wide-eyed idealist who would either be beaten down by life till they were corrupted by it or rose above it, Kate Skywalker already started his story beaten down by life. While not an antagonist or villain, Kate is far from a hero. He's washed up, burnt out, and he's a former Jedi. Much of his journey is learning not just to come to terms with his own shortcomings, but the shortcomings of the Jedi and his family. While initially turned off by the edge sharp enough to shave a Wookiee, I found myself endeared to Kate's story more and more as time went on. In fact, I can actually say after reading through it, while he is an edgy protagonist, he's an endearing edgy protagonist, and I can see why lots of people love him. 
On the other side of Star Wars Legacy is Ania Solo's story, the first ever protagonist of a Star Wars era to be led by a woman. Ania Solo is a junker and honestly a character that I had personally forgotten about in recent years, but found myself falling in love with all over again as I dug back into her character. She's related to the Skywalkers and the Solos, but that doesn't force her to be anything other than who she chooses to be. Ania's agency comes from who she is as a person, and the convictions that she has are tied to who she is as an individual. Then there's Jai Assam, an Imperial Knight with a strong moral compass, who begins his story working for the Empire, then teams up with Junker Ania Solo, the two bond and become close and- Hey wait, who turned on The Force Awakens? One half of Star Wars Legacy deconstructs how we see Star Wars by showing us the harsh reality of the galaxy and how it can change someone, how it can have lasting effects to the point that even a Skywalker has become haunted by it. Yet it also remains hopeful in the context that even as much as Cade doubts himself, as broken as he is, there are people in his life who want to help him, who want to make the galaxy better. On the other half, we see the reconstruction of how we see Star Wars with the tales of Aenea Solo being more grounded in the spirit of adventure that many love about Star Wars. Yes, there are some moments of darkness and hopelessness, but it never loses sight of taking our heroes on an adventure where we get to see these idealistic people fight through the horrors of the galaxy and come out the other side better. But maybe you're not interested in what happens after the Lucas saga of Star Wars films. Maybe you're interested in what happened before the Skywalkers got involved in the conflicts of the galaxy. Imagine that, conflicts in the galaxy without Skywalkers. Kinda seems weird, but hey, they existed. And if so, let us talk about the Old Republic. The Old Republic is an interesting era of Star Wars because let me tell you, this era spans a long time. It can either refer to characters all the way back from Revan to Lena Benico to characters like Ixor Kun and Ula Kaldroma and so many more. The appeal of the Old Republic is almost the polar opposite of what the stories set after Return of the Jedi were, mostly because instead of the story focusing on a specific character tied to the Skywalkers or Solos, either by blood or circumstances, usually both, the Old Republic did something completely different. Instead of focusing on an individual who could and would drastically alter the events of the era, we would see how the events of the era themselves would alter the individuals. This allowed many people to become more absorbed in the events transpiring or becoming too attached to any one character or their families. Which, if you notice when you compare the Old Republic to, say, the New Republic times, you would see more people talk about, well, Cade Skywalker, Aenea Solo, Jaina Solo, and all those characters. While if you're talking about the Old Republic, you will hear more things like the Mandalorian Wars, the Jedi Civil Wars, the Neo-Sith Wars, goddamn there were a lot of wars, that would last all the way to the time of Darth Bane, thus entering the era of the rule of two Sith that many fans of the films should know all too well. There is so much extensive history and lore in this point of Star Wars that just describing one era could be its own video in of itself, and I definitely want to make more videos discussing all these finer details of the past of Star Wars. But we should move on because I will fanboy and I don't want to be, I don't want to be fanboying too long. This video is going to be a long one, kids. Trust me, we're not even too deep into this script and I've already been interrupted 2017 times outside of recording this. Don't worry about this. That's my own mental breakdown. Let's get back to the video. So now that we've covered the legends from both before and after the Lucas saga, let's talk about the era of legends that's the most overlooked. And that's the story set between the time skips of the films. And I've got a... I've got a very endeared relationship with these uh, stories, I do. To give a basic rundown of this era of Star Wars, these are the questions one would have after starting a new Star Wars film. What happened in between everything? What happened between The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones? Attack of the Clones to Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith to A New Hope, A New Hope to Empire Strikes Back, and Empire Strikes Back to Return of the Jedi. What was Palpatine's master Darth Plagueis like? What was Mace Windu like beyond what we saw in the films? What were the lives like of other Jedi during the prequels? What was the relationship of Dooku and the Jedi? What was Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship between the prequel films? Did any of the clones betray Order 66? Did a clone and a Jedi ever fall in love and make babies? What was Obi-Wan's life like in exile? What adventures did the OT3 have between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back? What adventures did Luke, Leia, and Lando have between Empire and Return? If you had a question about something while watching these movies, 
Chances are the question was already answered in Legends, and sometimes the answers were weird, but other times the answers were pretty damn interesting. I mean, just look at 2003's Clone Wars show, which answered a lot of minor characters, like where did Anakin get his scar from in Revenge of the Sith, to actually being able to see him being knighted. And there was actually a really emotional scene between Anakin and Obi-Wan where they discussed Qui-Gon. Anakin, you're late. If I'm late for another scolding, does it really matter? You're not a little boy anymore. You're right. I'm not a little boy. And as far as your wisdom goes, you're no Qui-Gon Jinn. Master, forgive me. I, I didn't mean... I know. I miss him too. I've done my best to pass his teaching to you. And in our time together, you have proven to me that you are capable of all he believed you would be. Anakin Skywalker, by the right of the Council, by the will of the Force, dub the I do Jedi. Did that mean everything was perfect? No, but here's the thing guys, nothing is ever perfect in any story. And legends had their faults and they had a lot of heart that made people love them. From nuanced stories that rivaled even The Empire Strikes Back, like Knights of the Old Republic 2, all the way to stories like The Force Unleashed that offered an original, interesting story about a time period between the prequels and the original trilogy. And just speaking as someone who grew up with a lot of these stories before the Disney buyout, hell, before a lot of them were even retconned by Filoni and team with The Clone Wars 2008, I can understand why many fans prefer these stories over a lot of the newer ones we got from the Disney canon. And well, <laughs> well folks, we finally entered that stage of the video where I have to compare Legends to Disney Star Wars. And I understand if some don't want to hear this comparison so for the sake of those who don't want to hear it just skip to this timestamp below and i'll see you guys there okay okay bye okay so here's my two cents i think what legends has going for it over the new canon is that while it was far from perfect it offered a lot of compelling interesting stories that answered many questions people had other times it introduced new stories that inspired them to dive deeper into star wars and i mean really deep star wars legends explored deeper concepts than even the film sometimes deeper than the Sith bad and Jedi good, the complications of war, the force, and the loyalty to failing factions. Sometimes it was fleshing out characters like Count Dooku or Mace Windu into three-dimensional people. Other times it was showing us how cultures grew through the ages. Then there were times where it gave folks stories they couldn't get anywhere else. You weren't going to get certain stories from the movies. You couldn't get certain stories from the movies, either due to the actors or budgetary reasons or all that shit. What was the aftermath of the original trilogy? What will the next generation be like? What legacy did the OT characters leave behind? The stories that deal with Thrawn, Mara Jade, and George Big Papa Daddy answer what happens after. The stories of the Skywalker family, the Solo household, Finn Galfredi, and Cal Katan answer the question of what happens with the next generation after the aftermath. And the stories with Cade Skywalker, Ania Solo, and Jaya Sam answer the questions of what is the legacy of the next generation. Whatever some may feel about these stories, they offer something that Disney canons after Return of the Jedi does not. They offer progression, which is important in the context of story structure. You can write me essays upon essays upon essays on how X is realistic, but not if it comes to the cost of progression. And definitely not if you didn't even consume anything about Legends, which let me just tell you, if you didn't read Legends, I do not want you judging Legends, okay? I'm a fan of both Disney canon and Legends canon, okay? I'm a fan of both. Y'all have seen me simp for a lot of these characters, and I will say I am a fan of Legends continuity just because of the aspect of progression. The biggest difference between Legends stories set after the original trilogy and the new canon stories set after the original trilogy is that Legends had to be approved by George Lucas, so for any faults Legends had, it still had to go through the big guy, which meant the writers had limitations of the things they could and couldn't do, the main one being not to screw up the progression of the characters from the OT. Put them through whatever torture you wanted to. Kill their kids. Kill their wife. Drop a goddamn moon on them. No matter what, as long as it didn't take away from where the characters had gone, what they achieved, it was kosher. Hell, by Star Wars Legacy, all of the characters from the OT were dead, except for R2 because he is f***ing immortal. Luke Skywalker even ended up in exile in Legends, but the execution of how, why, and when were extremely different. Yes, Palpatine did somehow return in Legends as well, but again, the difference there is context, and let me talk to you about context. Palpatine's return in Legends doesn't take away from Anakin saving Luke's life, which yes, we can talk about the lore of destroying the Sith all day, but any story that would involve the Sith 
past Return of the Jedi would bring a level of question into if Anakin's destiny was completed, something Lucas himself would have done with his own plans for the sequels. What mattered was that Anakin saved the life of his son, thus letting him bring back the Jedi and help rebuild the Republic with Leia, Han, and Lando. Letting Luke fix the mistakes of the past Jedi Order, have a family, have a life, was something Anakin was never able to do and what he gave to Luke through his sacrifice. Yes, we can talk about the Chosen One prophecy all day, but Anakin's sacrifice was geared towards Luke, what he did for him. A clone of the old Raisin Palpatine may be divisive, to say the least, in execution, but the fact that his existence doesn't come at the cost of the progression of what the characters had already achieved means that Palpatine's return is more of an annoying crumb than a stain. And again, this is all because Luke Skywalker's progression remains intact. There's this weird misconception that Luke Skywalker and Legends never failed, which, no. Luke Skywalker in Legends failed plenty of times. He went through plenty of emotional trauma. After the death of his wife, he was basically described as a rock by his son. And this problem of taking away progression would relate to how many Legends fans would view the general treatment of the original trilogy characters in the first place, mainly Luke Skywalker himself. And, well, okay, you know, this is going to get juicy when I mention Luke Skywalker, goddammit. Now, I'm not going to get into if Luke Skywalker's treatment in the sequel trilogy is good or bad. If you love it, I'm happy for you. What I'm going to talk about, though, is why some fans prefer Legends, because, again, uh, art is subjective when it comes to enjoyment. So, yeah, we can grade art by the quality, and yes, we can. Yes, we can. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the video. I'm sorry, guys. I, I ramble. To be blunt, Legends explored Luke Skywalker's character in deeper ways than the sequel trilogy ever could or would have. To be blunt, Legends explored Luke Skywalker more than the Disney canon ever could. Why? Because Legends had multiple different stories that ran multiple different eras of Luke Skywalker's life from right after the original trilogy to after he got married and had kids to when he's a fucking ghost. So we saw Luke in so many different scenarios and situations there's just no way to say oh yeah Legends did nothing with them. A lot of people misinterpret Luke Skywalker and Legends as this one highway where he just never changed. But in actuality, it was like a roller coaster of going up and down, up and down, learning and breaking and rebuilding himself. In truth, we watched Luke Skywalker try and fail many different times in Legends. The Force ghosts of his fathers and mentors had moved away from him shortly after Return of the Jedi, and the conflicts he was facing were different than save father and beat Emperor. We watched Luke having to confront his shortcomings as a leader, a Jedi, and even a person. We watched him struggle with love, struggle with fatherhood, and as a widow, and eventually even struggle with the very concept of his legacy and his family itself. But he did all of this. He struggled through all this with the friends and family he made along the way of his journeys. And for many fans of Luke, for many fans of the original trilogy characters, after the OT, that was rewarding to see in a story. And I'm not saying there's any right way to tell a story, but what I am saying is that if you were invested in the story of the original trilogy and got to see how Legends grew beyond that story and worked off their progression, the new canon tearing all of that down is just jarring to say the least, especially in the context of Luke Skywalker who seems like he lost the most in comparison to his Legends counterpart. But let me take it back to Disney Star Wars and see if you guys can relate to that. You see, when it comes to Disney Star Wars, a lot of people think that the sequel trilogy fandom is just like a kumbaya of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker, having fans that everyone agrees with and loves. <laughs> oh, mon ami, that's not even close to the truth. The sequel trilogy fandom is a mess where most people disagree with each other. The Force Awakens fans are mad at The Last Jedi for retconning things from The Force Awakens. The Last Jedi fans are mad at The Rise of Skywalker Walker for retconning things from, well, The Last Jedi, and the Rise of Skywalker fans don't want anything retconned from their movie going forward. They want to see Rey's Jedi Order, they want to see what becomes of Finn's future in the Force and with Rey, what happens to Poe, Jenna, Rose, and everyone else. And if you're one of those people, imagine you got those stories. Imagine you got to see Rey bring back the Jedi, settle down in a happy life with Finn or whoever with Finn, you know, fuck, this is my video, with Finn, who's now a Jedi too. 
watch them grow older with their friends fight their future battles grow as people and all that stuff then one day disney sells star wars to warner brothers and they say all those stories set after the rise of skywalker the ones that you've had with you for a good amount of years are no longer canon and they introduce a new trilogy for better or worse gives a story that was nothing like the ones you loved and introduces a story that kind of takes away a lot of the things the characters achieved after the rise of skywalker and even in the context of the sequel trilogy itself let me ask you a question if you were disappointed by that new trilogy that warner brothers put out after the sequels that ignored all of the older stories that gave ray finn and all the others a life beyond the sequel trilogy would you be okay with people telling you just to forget those stories and embrace what we have now would you be okay with those same people calling you toxic and incels because you missed the stories that you had grown accustomed to said after the sequels that were there for so long until the cannon was just wiped. No? Well, that's what a lot of Legends fans go through. There's a giant misconception that if you're a fan of Legends, you're just some dude bruh who hates women and black people. Like, come on, man, yo, wake up. I'm a Legends fan and I like the new Disney canon. You got a lot of people who love Legends from all different walks of life. And to just assume that because they're fans of Legends that they're a toxic person is f***ed up. I believe everyone can like different things and I don't think there's anything wrong with people enjoying the new canon the Disney canon, whatever you want to call it. However, I do think there's something wrong with people getting so upset that others prefer Legends to the new canon. But I also don't think it's fair for some Legends fans to be attacking anyone else who enjoys the new canon. And I can't fix that. I can't make Legends fans and I can't make new canon fans just automatically get along and be happy with what they have because, well, it's never going to happen. We're fandoms. We fight. That's what we're good for. <laughs> uh sad. What I can do is say that people need to stop worrying about if something is canon and just start caring about if it makes them happy. In truth, there are some stories in the new canon that I personally love. There are a lot of stories in Legends that I also love. It doesn't have to be one way or the other. In fact, I know some people who combine both timelines in their minds and just pick and choose whatever they like. And maybe that's just for the better. Canon only matters if you're writing for Star Wars, not if you're consuming it. Usually at this point in the video, I try to think of something melodramatic to say, you know, how we should all come together, how we should do this, continue this story, blah, 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 blah. And I don't think this is this type of video. Also, I'm really tired of my one friend making fun of my melodramatic ending. Screw you. I like to be sentimental. This is a video of me saying that regardless of if Legends is canon or not, regardless if Disney ever decides to continue it in its own continuity and regardless of if you love or disappointed by where disney star wars has gone there's a lot to love about star wars legends so if you have some time and are curious to learn about some different stories in a galaxy far far away maybe go check out star wars legends and who knows maybe you'll love it well, my friends, it looks like our time has come to an end. If you would like to check out Star Wars Legends, here are my recommendations of stories, comics, and etc. that I personally enjoyed and a lot of other people enjoyed. Star Wars Legends means a lot to me and I am really glad I got to make this video because it was a long time coming. For those of you who like my work and want to support me even further, I've got a Patreon available that helps fund this channel and make sure I can keep making these little videos all for you guys. So for just $1 a month, you can become a Patreon and greatly help out this channel and keep me making more and more videos like these fine people right here. I'd also like to give a special thanks to these people. Gina H, Hiriko L, JC, Le Petit Loup Rouge, I have no idea if I'm saying that right and I am so sorry. Molly, Prowl, M, HD, and Maureen. Thank you, my friends, for your continued support. It means the world to me. Stay safe, stay healthy. And I'll see you guys next time.